Syrian tribes and clans affirm their support for the consultative meeting in Moscow and call on all sides to render it successful. Iraqi troops in the midst of the terrorists in Al-Ambar and Dayala. News reports about Operation Room founded by the Lebanese forces partied in Rumia prison east of Beirut to run terrorist operations in Lebanon in cooperation with terrorist organizations. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. The Czechs and chiefs of Syrian tribes have voiced their support for the consultative meeting to be held in Moscow on the Syrian crisis, calling on all concerned sides to render the meeting successful and end the Syrians' suffering. In a statement issued at their conference held at Damaros Hotel in Damascus, aimed at unifying their stand regarding the meeting scheduled next week, the sheikhs stressed the need to hold on to Syria's national principles, particularly the unity of Syrian land and people. The sheikhs affirmed that the tribes and clans in Syria will be an asset to the Syrian Arab army in confronting the terrorists and clearing the Syrian land of their atrocities. Voicing determination to confront Takfiri thought that has nothing to do with ethics, noble values, and Islam. The Ministry of Religious Endowment has condemned the vicious takfiri attack on Sheikh Mohammed the Nabhan tomb and other tombs of religious scholars in Aleppo. The Ministry said such ugly crime is added to the list of terrorist atrocities who keep violating sanctities and religious value, values. The Ministry added that it is not owed for those who allow themselves to shed citizens' blood discrete holy places and kill innocent people to violate the sanctities of the dead religious scholars and clerics. The ministry called for standing unified in face of the takfiri obscuring terrorism. Without condemning the Zionist aggression that targeted Al-Amal farms in Qunaitra countryside, claiming the lives of a number of Lebanese resistance men, the spokesperson of the United Nations, Farah Al-Han Haq, described the Israeli raid as constituting a violation of the disengagement agreement signed in 1974. In a press conference in New York, Haq said the United Nations Disengagement Observation Force stationed in Golan monitored two drones coming from the Israeli occupied side, flying from Alpha side and crossing the ceasefire line. They saw, he added, smoke coming from position 30 and observed unmanned planes flying over the same position, crossing the sea's fire line. American Senator Chris Murphy has said that the United States has contributed to igniting extremist movements through its wars in the Middle East. In an interview with an American CNN, Murphy said that the Saudi Arabia and a number of United States allies in the Middle East have portrayed the conflict in the world as that between Islam and Christianity, and between East and West. He said when a country like Saudi Arabia finances terrorism and commits violations such as whipping Twitter bloggers who criticize extremism and executes Christians on the charge of abusing Islam, the result will be encouraging rumors about the so-called conflict between the two sides. Murphy criticized the American wars on terrorism, which he said were counterproductive, further strengthening the terrorists and increasing the number of recruits among their ranks thus posing a bigger danger on the United States itself. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has said that his country would not yield to terrorist threats. In a press conference, Abe added that Japan's stand is steady and that it would go on with the battle against terrorism, demanding the release of the two hostages. Abe's statement came after ISIS released a video threatening of killing two hostages in 72 hours and listed 200 million United States dollars ransom is paid to them. The American newspaper Los Angeles Times revealed that the terrorist organization ISIS has turned a number of schools in Syria and Iraq into centers to train children on carrying out terrorist operations. The American newspaper Los Angeles Times revealed that the terrorist organization ISIS has turned a number of schools in Syria and Iraq into centers to train children on carrying out terrorist operations.
The Iraqi army has eliminated 37 ISIL terrorists, including 13 who carried Arab nationalities and destroyed six of their vehicles in Al Kalama district south of Al Anbar. The army also killed scores of ISIL terrorists who tried to attack the headquarters of the second regiment belonging to the 4th Brigade in Zone 2 near Al Walid border, outlet west of Al Anbar. In Dayala, a large number of ISIL terrorists were killed or wounded in intense artillery shelling that targeted five of their gatherings northeast of Pakuba. The Lebanese security forces discovered an operation room in Rumia prison in Beirut equipped with all requirements to command the explosions and terrorist operations that took place in Lebanon in cooperation with the terrorist armed groups outside the prison. The security forces seized 2,000 cell phones as well as devices for editing and records in addition to thousands of dollars and millions of Lebanese bounds in their closets, clothes and inside the cement walls. The prisoners had hidden the mobile phones and communication devices there as well as prototypes for hand grenades which were used in training in addition to a book for teaching how to make explosives and how to use bombs. A week earlier, the Lebanese security forces had carried out an operation in Rumi prison and raided buildings into which access was impossible before that time. A Palestinian woman sustained trauma injuries by sound bombs and rubble bullets fired by the Israeli occupation troops during storming al Aysawiyah town in Jerusalem city and three Palestinian students were detained as occupation's bulldozers demolished a house in the town. In Beit Amir town, north of Hebron city, a number of Palestinian civilians have been injured and eight others have been detained, among them two children. In the Gaza Strip, Israeli gunboats renewed their aggression, targeting the boats of Palestinian fishermen of a Sudania area, preventing them from fishing. The Libyan army continues to move forward the city in Benghazi after tightening the siege on gatherings of terrorist militias of the so-called Ansar al-Sharia positions inside the city. A military source said that army units made significant progress along a lengthy axis, adding that scores of terrorists have been killed and their vehicles destroyed. It is to be noted that confrontations have continued on many fronts in Libya as the so-called Fajr Libya and Shuruq have breached the ceasefire agreement by attacking units in charge of the oil facilities near a Sidra seaport. A ceremony in Al-Assad House for Opera and Arts for the Scientific Olympics. Here in Damascus, more in the following. Under the patronage of Mrs. Asma al-Assad, the National Agency of the Syrian Scientific Olympiad held a ceremony for the winners of the national finals of 2014-2015 of the Syrian Scientific Olympiad at al-Assad House for Culture and Arts in Damascus. It is one of the best things Syria can do for its best students uh, and because it can motivate them uh, to work harder and uh, be something useful in the future. Uh, I am so enjoying this uh, uh, atmosphere. Uh, the exam was uh, something hard, but we crossed it. It wasn't easy because everyone here uh, worked really hard to get here and let the best man win. And if I didn't win, and any other, other win, and it, we're all brothers eventually, and I'm happy for us. Uh, just being here is, a, is an honor. We are here having a co competition between experts and students for mathematics, physics, chemistry, informatics, everything. It's a really honest uh, competition between all. It's, uh, of course, my, uh, it's my pleasure to be here between these students. And that, uh, as my friend said, let the uh, best man win. We are all winners, of course. Medals and certificates were awarded to the winners from across the country. With this, we come to the end of our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy.